Oscar Wilde famously said, I can resist everything except temptation. And looking at these, you can rather see what he meant. But Wednesday is the start of Lent, and it's a time when many of us think about resisting temptation and giving up things we love. So I've only got a few days left. Um, chocolate flapjack, please. Tonight, we hear the personal stories of three people for whom some of the more serious temptations of our modern world proved too powerful to resist. And there are hymns for Lent from St George's Church, Gravesend in Kent. When I think of temptation, I automatically think of food. The last thing that tempted me recently was a woman. Mostly money, actually, mostly money. A bag of five donuts disappearing all at one sitting. I've gone my Xbox way too much. <laughs> There's nothing quite so tempting as being tempted by chocolate. <laughs> we can't escape temptation, obviously. It's part of being human. And it usually takes a lot more subtle forms than a, a cake or even a diamond ring. It's what we do about it that matters. It's a very powerful story in the Bible about Jesus spending 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness being tempted. That's what our first hymn's about. And it's sung by the congregation gathered at St George's Church in Gravesend. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The verses have intrigued Bible scholars for centuries. So what was Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, 40 days, 40 nights? What was that all about? I think that when people think of temptation, they think of a kind of a niggling voice in their head that's just going round and round, and it's just coming from their own thoughts, and it just needs to be ignored. But here we see Jesus doing something quite different. He doesn't ignore this voice. He actually addresses it. 
Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And then we have this temptation to leap off from the top of the temple. What are we seeing there? Yes, here we're seeing this misunderstanding that unlimited freedom is the route to happiness. It's actually the reverse. And if we, if we don't live within the boundaries that God has set in place, it can be very harmful for us and in some cases devastating. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and him only. So what can we learn from this overall, would you say? What we see from these verses is that temptation itself isn't wrong um, because Jesus himself was tempted in every way and yet didn't do anything wrong. It isn't wrong to actually be tempted. It's what you actually do with it that counts. Alex Arthur dreamt of becoming a boxer from the age of 10. I took it upon myself to ask my friend if he would take me along to the local boxing club. And then uh, he also told me that he attended church on a Sunday and that they had a little football team and you got a huge spread afterwards. So I kind of found church and boxing on the same day, basically. Alex went from amateur boxer to professional champion with one win after another. So this is your trophy cabinet, what have we got? Well up here we've got the IBF international title, it's the first professional belt that I ever won. Yeah. And this of course is the, is the world championship. Yeah, can I feel it? It's yeah, heavy isn't it? And lots of bling. Yeah there is, yeah. <laughs> yeah you need shades every time you, you come over to the cabinet <laughs> to look do. in there, yeah. <laughs> It was after winning his gold Commonwealth medal that Alex got a taste for fame. I noticed that, you know, people were acting differently towards me. 
you know, people wanted to be around me that really didn't before. You know, I was being invited to so many different, you know, parties and things like that. And then I started, you know, getting exposure on Sky TV and, and you know, and BBC and, and, and ITV. I wanted it a little bit more all the time. So after a fight, I would have to wear all new clothes. I wouldn't go out two days running with the same clothes on. And then I would kind of then go off the rails a little bit again. What was it that was so seductive, so tempting about fame? It did make me feel invincible. And even it even started to show in my boxing. I just didn't believe there was anyone that could even come close to to even beating me or even giving me a tough fight. You know, all I need to do is show up at these fights. I'll hit the guy, he'll go over, I'll get another ton of money and I'll go away and enjoy myself again. And so what happened? I got knocked on my backside. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Gomez beat Alex, taking away his title and at the same time bringing him straight back down to earth. I remember waking up in the hospital bed that morning and thinking I've got to change everything. You know, and I had this really strong, strong feeling you know, inside myself telling me, you're doing everything wrong, Alex, you need to change, you know. I can recall getting home, uh, picking up my Bible and, and just randomly opening it. And I randomly opened it at Sam's and, uh, and I can remember just starting to read some scriptures and, and it, was, <laughs> it was explaining to me in the scriptures how God disciplines you if, you if you go on the wrong track and it's because you're his child and he loves you and, he, you know, and he wants the best for you, so you know, he's not got a problem with basically giving you a, giving you a wake-up call, you know, and it was just so shocking to me, you know. I remember just closing it and putting it down, you know, and thinking, I don't know if I'm quite ready for that yet. <laughs> what have you learned about the temptations of fame? I know exactly how to deal with it now, you know, the, it's been there again, you know, it's, it's there all the time, but you just have to know how to deflect it, you know. So and now that I know, it's, it's a lot more easy to, to deal with every day. <laughs>